I want to quickly touch on the topic of Cohen's D and an issue that arises here first, and then later we'll see that this issue becomes applicable also when we start talking about some of the tests we learn in future chapters. So as we take a look at this, I want to first make it clear that Cohen's D is intended to be what's called a measure of effect size. Effect size is the idea that um, we want to know not just whether or not something is significant, but how large of an effect um, it is, the practical significance. So this is something I mentioned a bit at the end of our hypothesis testing lecture. Uh, and we will talk about a couple different effect sizes in our class, Cohen's D being one of them. So Cohen's D is a, a standardized mean difference. So that is we get the difference between two means and we just get a standard deviation in the denominator and that tells us how far apart those two means are from one another in standard deviation terms. So it's a little bit of what I was trying to foreshadow with some of your previous work looking at, for example, the means of the groups by depression and things in your project one lab. So the whole idea is kind of like trying to make connections, what we're doing to how it's useful for what we're going to learn next. So here, this is another one of those where we're going to need to have the ability to think about pooling variance and how that is important in Cohen's D. So I'm asking you to start thinking ahead a bit uh, to apply that kind of logic in your lab. So first, let's revisit what uh, the important concepts are around variance. So if you remember, variance is... Here I've got the formula for a sample variance, right? In statistics, we almost always use sample statistics, right? We very rarely have population parameters. Right now you're in the one kind of unique time in class where you're given a bunch of expected values uh, and you assume that you know the population parameters. But that's almost never the case. In fact, the rest of this class will be moving away from having population values and we'll have to always use sample estimates. So, the sample variance is derived conceptually as the sum of squares over degrees of freedom. This is always what a variance is. It is the sum of squares over a degrees of freedom. Okay. And so this makes variance an average of sorts because a sum over a count is an average. So here we have a sum of the squared deviations, right? And it is over a count, which is our degree of freedom. So for a sample, we would take the sum of the scores minus the mean squared, right? Those are the deviations. Um, and so we would then divide that by n minus 1. And this would give us the variance. So hopefully you remember this. Is, we first learned this back in chapter 4, and these types of ideas never go away, right? We continue to build on them. So we're going to be building on that with the concept of pooling variance now. So don't get scared by this looking long. It's actually a very simple extension. And I think the conceptual equation helps us to understand uh, that it is a simple extension. So here, a pooled variance annotated with the sub P, because remember subscripts often tell us about um, ownership. To whom does this value belong, right? So sub P means that this is a pooled statistic belonging to multiple groups. And here it will belong to two groups. So the pooled variance is simply where you take the sum of squares for two groups. Here I have group one and group two. You add those together and you divide by the degrees of freedom for each group added together. So it's a pretty straightforward extension where it's like, oh, I have two groups. So now I just take those two numbers and add them together in the numerator and add them together in the denominator and then divide. What that would look like computationally is that you are taking the deviations for individual scores in group one from the mean of group one, and you are taking deviations for individual scores in group two around the mean for group two. So each group has its own average, right? They're two separate groups. And every one in either of the groups, right? People in group one aren't all at the group one average. And people in group two aren't all at the group two average. So here we would take the deviations for each group uniquely, right? Add them together. That's the sum of squares for one plus the sum of squares for two. And then the denominator, we would take the sample size for each group uniquely, subtract one in each case because they both have their own mean estimated in the sum of squares, right? So we would take n minus 1 for group 1 and n minus 1 for group 2. That's how we get to the equation for sum of squares. So if you have sum of squares, it's pretty straightforward. If you have variance, 
um, you have to work backwards for it to get to sum of squares, for example. How do you get back to sum of squares from variance, right? Well, you'd multiply by the degree of freedom term. So if you had been given two variances to work with and you needed to pool them, you would take the variance for group one, multiply by the degree of freedom for group one, plus the variance for group two, multiply by the degree of freedom for group two, right? And when you do that, that gives you the sum of squares for each group. You can add those together now and then divide by the degree of freedom terms. So this is the concept that you need to know when in the lab I ask you to compare two groups to one another instead of to an expected value. So that's kind of a natural extension. Now, we're going to see that what we use in Cohen's D is a standard deviation. So just as a reminder, a standard deviation is simply derived by taking the square root of the variance. So here, if I have a pooled variance and I square root it, I have the pooled standard deviation. So Cohen's D will have two cases that we'll talk about. In the one sample case, you're comparing to expected values. So you would simply say, how far does my mean differ from the expected mean? Again, a population value there, mu, over the population standard deviation. Or if you're given the mu, but not the population standard deviation, you could use your sample's estimate. Okay, but like for a Z test, this is Cohen's D. So it basically, it should look familiar. This looks like a z-score, right? Except for what? This is a mean instead of a score, right? So this is like the mix between because a z-test is a mean, the mean of the sample minus the expected value over the standard error. So we, we're missing the square root n in the denominator. So that's the difference from a z-test. A z-score is a score minus a mean over a standard deviation. So Cohen's d is kind of like a z-score for the difference between means instead of scores. That's why we call it a standardized mean difference. Standardized means we divide by the standard deviation to give it all the same standard deviation units and mean difference because we're getting the difference between two means. Standardized mean difference. Now in the two sample case, you would take the difference between the two means you've obtained and then you would divide by the pooled standard deviation. And that would be the way that you would get to Cohen's D for a two-sample comparison case.